Hi everyone, so welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. My name is Chloe, I am a singer, songwriter, writer and a guitarist and today I thought I would do my year review, my review of 2018 and I know this is going to be quite long, I'm going to try and do my best to keep everything concise but I just, I really wanted to do this video and kind of like open up a bit more with you guys because a lot happened in 2018 that I really want to talk about. Some things I still want to keep private because they've been quite new in my life and quite quite recent. I don't particularly want to talk about that right now. I will probably do that in a future video, I'm not entirely sure when, but it'll be when I'm ready to talk about that kind of thing. For the time being, let's go ahead and get into the video. And I'm going to start off with January, obviously, it's a good place to start and I do actually have a lot of notes for this video, I've got like, I've got three pages. Let's start off with January, which is a good place to start. Uh, so, in the beginning of January, I came down with a cold, it's a bit like this year, hopefully not though, fingers crossed, because I got a cold at the beginning of the year. There wasn't... I didn't think much of it and then um, something happened and it got quite bad. On the 4th of January I remember my right, I think it was my right ear popped, it, one of my ears popped basically but it was like I was in college and my ear just popped and then that evening I was really tired and I had explorers, it was a Thursday. I remember dates really well. I was really tired that night at Explorers because I still went to Explorers and I was just really tired and then the next morning I woke up um, and I think I woke up when my mum was at work and I basically just noticed that my face was a little off, something was a little odd with my face and it, it just looked a bit weird to me and I just thought nothing of it but then when my mum got home in the afternoon she kind of took a look at me and was like, what's wrong with your face? I was like, I don't know. So, because it was a bit lopsided on the left. So my mum had to phone the doctors. And obviously because they thought I was having a stroke, I had to do this, which I could do. I could do it perfectly fine. And so I was kind of like rushed into the doctors. Like an emergency appointment with my GP went in. I couldn't shut my left eye properly and I was... I just couldn't really use the left side of my face and so I was diagnosed with Bell's palsy which is basically where a nerve kind of like paralyzes, kind of like stops working and paralyzes you almost. So the left side of my face was paralyzed and that word is quite scary actually. So that happened, I was diagnosed with Bell's palsy and so I was I was put on medication straight away. I was given a prescription medication. I was prescribed medication and I was on a lot of tablets. Every day I was on steroids and these little tiny little tablets that I think I had to take probably four times a day. And yeah, the steroids were bloody massive as well. I think they were the steroids anyway. And so I was put on medication and then I was also referred to the ENT department in the hospital. But because it was a Friday when this happened, I had to wait until the Monday following to go to the hospital. And so then I ha on Monday I had my hospital appointment. I went in with my mum and we met my nan because my nan actually works at the hospital. We met my nan and we had breakfast at the hospital. I did have breakfast at home, however I also had I also had breakfast at the hospital. We had bacon rolls, they were so nice. I just remember them so vividly still. They were so nice and it's been over a year. It's ridiculous how much, how well I remember this. And then after having breakfast, we went to the phlebotomy ward and I had a blood test. I had, and it wasn't a type of blood test that just kind of like, I don't know how to describe it. It was more advanced. So we could see what the hell was going on. And then after my blood test, we went to the ENT department and I had a hearing test. Um, sound was a lot sharper in my left ear, I remember that. 
Um, but I think that was the only like thing. It wasn't like a big deal. There wasn't there wasn't anything like majorly wrong with me. It was just my nerve in the left side of my face. We consulted with the doctor and kept having my medication to the end of the course of the medication and it just it went away pretty quickly. Pretty quickly it healed quite fast because of how quickly my, it was noticed. And then a couple weeks later I got my blood test results back and it turns out that I had a B12 deficiency. But that week of after the actual thing, the, after that, the week after I developed Bell's palsy, I did not go to college because the <laughs> medication wiped out my entire system and it was just not pretty and I did not want to be in college with that kind of issue going on, if you get where I'm hinting at. And also in January I was talking to this guy, I've got a lot to talk about in this video, I apologise. I was also talking to a guy in January, I had been talking to him for about a couple months in January, which it was going well surprisingly. We were just friends and it worked and that was January and obviously because of the B12 deficiency I tried getting more into my diet and then in February I got into a relationship with the guy. This is where everything kind of went downhill because for the first month February was completely fine and then um, I was trying to get more B12 into my diet. I was with my boyfriend at the time in February. One of the things I think that's quite a key factor in this is the fact that he was also depressed. He suffers with depression and I think he still I think he still does. Um I don't really feel comfortable talking about this, let's talk about something else. Um because obviously it's his life, not mine. I just thought that I should mention that quickly. And then the first few weeks of that relationship went really well and then March came along and things got bad obviously it started snowing and obviously I wanted to see him but we weren't able to because of the snow it would it kept us apart um, <laughs> which I didn't like um, and in March the relationship ended um, and I took it really badly I very quickly got into a very severe episode of depression and myself yes um, and I think most of it was caused by the relationship but then part of it was also caused by the B12 levels because I had another pl blood test in March and it also came back quite bad I t it turns out that my levels of B12 in my the levels of B12 in my blood were basically lower than in January which was bad so I had an appointment with my doctor and we basically came to the conclusion that I would have monthly injections and so that started in April and I was basically just I was depressed the entire month of March um, like very severely um, which is something I would like to talk about more on this channel but also in March, I think it's more like January, February, at the beginning of the year, I actually got the idea for the definition of love. You might know this, you might have been watching my channel for that long that you were there when I came up with the initial idea. But I got that idea and I was outlining in March and April. And then in April, it was obviously my first month of B12 injections. So in April, I was, I was kind of still depressed, but not as much as I was in... March. I think it was also, yes, it was also the month where I started struggling with depression also during my um, period. Um, I think it, I don't know how common it is for women to get depressed during their period. I have heard of someone that, have, that has suffered with that kind of thing, but I think in April it was a lot worse. My depression was a lot worse when I was on my period. It just wasn't very nice at all. I think it was also my relationship as well that I had been in that 
had left me depressed as well so I was depressed for a really long time because I was also still depressed in May um, however May was when I started writing the definition of love because I had finished the outline in April it was the last month that I was depressed for so I was depressed for a very long time and I at the time I didn't realize it I didn't realize I was depressed until May which was the last month that I was depressed for um, and I obviously still wasn't over my ex-boyfriend and obviously yes I started writing the definition of love um, and I think that was kind of like the main thing that got me out of that rut I was also talking to my ex-boyfriend's mate and he helped me through my tough times quite a bit as well and I obviously had my second B12 injection which went really well and then in June I obviously finished college I finished college really really early because I started no I didn't start my summer holidays basically started at the beginning of June because that's when I finished and so I think that was kind of one of the reasons why I started to feel a lot better uh, within myself I had obviously just like gotten out of a depressive episode I was writing the definition of love I think that was the main thing kind of like helping me through everything I felt a lot more like myself a lot more me and I also had a college trip to Thorpe Park it was very busy and we didn't even get in until lunchtime and by the time we got in we ha we basically ate and then went on four rides that was all we got to go on because we didn't know that if you're autistic you can basically give your letter in or show it to someone and get a fast track if you're on the spectrum take advantage of it please please take advantage of it I think a lot of people don't realize or basically you get that kind of thing in Legoland, but I didn't realise you also get it in Thorpe Park. Basically, there was only one girl out of the bunch of us that had a fast track. And there were loads of autistic people there, or people with autism. There was loads of people with autism there, loads of girls anyway. I know that because me and a friend and I think a couple others were also on the spectrum. And so it was kind of just a bit annoying, really, that trip. Um, and it was also very busy, hence why we only got to go on like four or five rides. And then for the second half of the year, which starts July. So in July, I actually participated in Camp NaNoWriMo and I managed to finish the first draft of The Definition of Love. And because it, it actually didn't feel like I would finish that book, and I did, and I just, when I finished the book, I had that amazing feeling that everyone gets. And obviously in June, I, ha I ha in June and July, I had a lot of time to write. I'd write like 3,000 words a day. And I think I mainly worked on, or wrote, on weekdays. Which is quite impressive actually. 3,000 words on average. It's pretty good. Um, sometimes even got to 5,000 it was just the best writing time for me and obviously in July my siblings were still at school and so I basically had the house to myself it was very sunny outside it was very nice um, and nothing really happened because my parents were obviously still at work as well and in July at the end of July we actually joined Slimming World which is kind of why I've lost weight I don't know if you've been able to tell or not if you're a long time viewer uh, but I have lost quite a bit of weight I'm surprised actually and then August in August I actually took a writing break a break from actually writing anyway and we went on holiday to Cornwall for a week Monday to Monday I think it must have been the first week of August last week of July we also went with family friends my dad has this friend that he's been friend with, friends with since secondary school which is pretty good actually I'm surprised with that, it's quite good actually as well so we went away 
with his family as well, like my dad's friend's family. And it was really good and we really enjoyed ourselves. I did anyway. And I also took that week to brainstorm for a funny kind of love as well. I think I kind of did talk about that. At some point, I think I must have done, but that was a really good like time for me, being in a different place really like spurred my inspiration it really helped being in a different environment in a different place and then obviously september was when i went basically september so september was interesting because obviously i started college again and i am on currently on the level two music course so that is what I started in September. So in September I was back to college and the month started well. The first week I was talking to a guy on the course and he was nice at the start, but after a week he was just like, nah, I don't wanna deal with you. Um, which was, I don't know, eye opening. I don't know, it's hard to describe because obviously his life is private uh, my, I keep I tend to keep my college life private anyway, so I was talking to this guy, and after a week, it just didn't work out. Everyone on the course was also, uh, we also had this group chat with everyone in, which was, it was fun at the start, but then, but then it just started to go downhill very, very quickly, because the guy obviously stopped talking to me, which I don't really care about, uh, honestly. Uh, I have better things to do with my time. Everything was good, Every, everyone was having fun. Um, and then, um, because that, um, it didn't work out with that guy, I turned to Yubo and started going back on the dating game. I met a guy, things didn't work out with him either. But it was okay. College was still going downhill. And then in October, I continued talking to people on Yubo because I had not yet met anyone um, that I really clicked with. I started talking with someone and it started really well. In October I also, things were still going downhill at college obviously, but I was, I was talking to this guy which it was going really well and still is going really well. But like I said, college was quickly going downhill, very much so. Um, and people started fighting um, and talking about each other behind each other's backs which I'm just like, do you really have to do that? Um, and then and there were these two people that got together one was that guy that I was talking about the one that I was talking to at the beginning of college he got into a relationship with someone else on the course which, like, I don't, I'm not against relationships in in college it's just the way things happened was just not right obviously you meant to be happy for a couple but I'm honestly just like really it's just not something I want to see in college really I fell out with those two people actually I just I don't really care that I fell out with them because I don't care about them and I don't care about what happened either. Um, it's just, I try not to get involved in drama anymore because it's just not worth it. And then obviously in October, I started talking to this guy and things were going really well with him. S still is, it still is going really well. And I obviously, I think October was the main month where I started making a lot of good friends. I started making a lot of good friends in college in October and I of and I became a lot closer to two people uh, in particular as well because we kind of had like similar opinions about the drama let's just say that and leave it at that um, and then October we also I also went on holiday with my sister Nan and granddad and we went to Scotland it was really fun and it was very cold, but we still had fun. There was a Primark involved. You did see my Scotland. If you haven't seen my Scotland tour yet, then 
go ahead and check that out. I'll make sure to leave a link up in the cards if I remember. Um, so that was October. And then in November, I did decide to participate in NaNoWriMo. However, <clears throat> I, I was working on the definition of love in the second draft. And after, like halfway through, I just decided to quit because it wasn't working for me. Um, the method I was using just wasn't working for me in general. It just wasn't working, so I just decided to quit. Um, however, I still carried on with the second draft of the definition of love because obviously I wanted to continue on with that. I'm not going to like stop doing something because I quit NaNoWriMo. I would never do that. Even if I... like. Even if there's a year in the future where I don't participate in NaNoWriMo, I'm sure I'll be working on something still. Yeah, so I kept working on the, the second draft of the definition of love. Things picked up at college. I had a lot of assignments. Well, I say I had a lot of assignments to get done. I was... I just... I had a few assignment deadlines in November, so I was kind of like prioritising college over everything else, which was a good thing. It was th a good decision for me to make. And then, obviously, college became my main priority and my focus because of the assignment deadlines coming up. I enjoyed the course. I was enjoying the course. However, I got too involved in the drama around me. If there's ever drama going on around you, don't get too involved or too in over your head because it's not worth it. It's really not. And then... In November, me and my boyfriend actually became official on the 10th, uh, just a day before Remembrance Day, which is very easy to remember, actually. And then, yeah, we had been talking for a month when we became official, which was, yeah, because like I said, I was talking to a guy in October. That guy is now my boyfriend. And then December... College was still going quite well. Obviously, I still had assignments to finish and everything like that. I still had assignment deadlines and assignments to do. But in December, I, I still kept working on like writing stuff and book stuff and things like that. It just wasn't my main focus or my main priority. Um, I did start working on the outline for AR again, though, because I've, I'm obviously re-outlining at the moment. Yeah, re-outlining and just redoing everything because the first draft and the first outline just didn't work out. It was very poorly developed as well. That's kind of why I started working on it again. But I did also keep working on um, revisions for the definition of love, the second draft anyway. Obviously, I continued prioritising college where I could and when I could. And because I got too involved in the drama around me, and I realised that I took a step back and just thought, you know, I I don't need to be I don't need to get involved in this. I really don't need to be involved in this. It's not my it's not my drama. I didn't cause any of this. I'm just adding to it. So I took a step back and just kind of stopped getting involved as much as I was. Because I took a step back, I was focused on college assignments and then when college finished for the year, as in like 2018, not the like academic year, when it college finished for the year, I decided that I wanted to uh, focus on my boyfriend for the Christmas holidays. Obviously it wasn't like obsessive, I kept working on AR and the definition of love as well, briefly and then um, I think, I believe it was from Saturday the 22nd uh, to probably like Friday, what would have been the date? I don't know. Friday the 28th was when I took a writing break. So Saturday the 22nd to Friday the 28th was when I took a break, which was about seven days. That was a little break for. Um, and I saw a lot of family during that during that time as well i saw my uncle my cousin my well obviously my uncle on my mum's side that's what i meant and then also my grandparents both sides so my mum and dad's grandparents and then obviously my uncles on my dad's side um 
so it was very busy a very and very emotional year overall and it's been also been very very tough on me one thing i also want to quickly mention is that i was in a friendship uh from july to october with this guy i was in a friendship i'm not gonna like go into detail about him but he just he wasn't a very nice guy let's just say that um i actually ended things with him in october there's that it was just a very emotional year and also very tough but it's been probably the most busiest year out of my time on earth and if i had three words to describe the year it would be busy emotional and rough those would be my three words of this year but that i think that is pretty much everything for this video now i've been rambling on for a while so i am actually going to go now that is the end of this video if you enjoyed it make sure to give a big thumbs up also make sure to subscribe down below to be notified every single time i upload you can ding the bell for that as well because youtube these days is just bad um or it's getting worse i think it's slowly getting worse uh <laughs> on that note Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. All of my social media links will be in the description down below for you, go, for you to go and check out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!